may remember him as number 44, the captain of the Bell River Nobles, but now, two years later, he's number 93 and a fullback for the number one ranked Michigan Wolverines. His name? Chris Roth. Now, how did Chris Roth ever have the audacity to think he belongs on a Big Ten football team? Well, with great family support, special attention from his high school coach, and a lot of perseverance, Chris made his dream a reality. In the fall of 1995, he ran through the famous tunnel at Michigan Stadium and touched the historical Wolverines banner for the first time. Chris Roth had arrived. I, I never liked settling for second best, and that's why I wanted to come here because it's it's one of the best places in the world to get school and football. You know, it's a lot of fun, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm having the time of my life. You, you can't describe the feeling that, yeah. that you that you feel, just because I mean the band's playing over there and there's people cheering you all over the place. The whole stadium is behind you, 100,000 plus people, and it's it's really amazing how fortunate I am and all of our team is to be in the situation that they are. Any Canadian university would love to have Chris play on their football team, but he took the risk and enrolled at Michigan with the hope of getting a tryout. Now for Chris Roth, the odds were a little heavier against him because he wasn't a scholarship athlete. He was not offered a scholarship. He went there as a walk-on. Nothing is handed to you at that level, and it may have appeared easy to some of us, and it looks that way, but it wasn't easy. A lot of people didn't, uh, you know, didn't think I could do it. Yes, I am a little bit short, um, and there's some guys where they stand in front of me and they got their shoulder pads above my eyes, so I got to kind of just peer around. But uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not the greatest physical specimen in the world, and I understand that. Big Ten football, one of Michigan's biggest sports traditions. They don't allow just anyone to try out, let alone make the team. So what makes Chris so special? There was a lot of tape that the Michigan coaches watched before they decided to give him an opportunity as a walk-on. You can't just show up. Right. You know, you have to, you have to uh, submit all your film, and they have to grade you and look at you and, you know, make sure you're, I guess, worthy. Also, he had credibility because he came out of what was the number one high school program, ranked the number one high school program in Canada that year. Coach Bloomfield really helped me out with that because he knew a lot about how everything worked. John Bloomfield was the coach of the champion Bell River Nobles, and he spent a lot of time helping Chris get to where he's at. Bloomfield remembers the skinny grade nine kid who wanted to play basketball. He was, he was not the most coachable kid when he was young. He was uh, very uptight, very uh, you know, stiff. I was very difficult. Uh, I had a huge ego. Most people with you know an arrogant young runt grade nine kid on their team would throw him right off the field. And I remember talking to him and his, his parents about it, that, you know, I, I worried that he, he never really seemed to be having fun, you know, that he was so consumed with being the best that he was, you know, very serious. And, and uh, you know, he's a very, um, <clears throat> he, he leads a very sort of clandestine uh, lifestyle. He doesn't drink. Uh, he's never touched any kind of, you know, cigarettes, drugs of any kind. I mean, he's, he's probably as, as pure as the, the driven snow. He is easily the most driven kid I've ever met uh, in any sport, any, you know, school-wise. Roth was an all-star football player, but it's his academic success that was key in getting Chris the opportunity to come to Michigan. Chris Roth had great grades. Chris Roth had a great attitude. Plus, he had athletic ability, and he had a heart that was twice the size of his body, figuratively speaking. And that's what enabled him to go to Michigan and do so well. Take a look at the game sheet, and Chris Roth is just another name on the list. But ask anyone who knows him, and they'll tell you differently. Chris has always been the kind of a child who knows where he wants to go with his life. He knows exactly what he wants to do and where he wants to go, and he'll achieve his goals. He's got all 90s. He's doing straight A's, even after four or five hours of football every night. Here? Yep, yep. He wants to go into medicine, so he's, he knows he has to do it. The number one factor behind his success was his total ability to focus on what he wanted to do and what he wanted to be. And he made it happen. He made it happen academically, he made it happen with his attitude, and he made it happen by taking his ability and working real hard in the weight room so that he would be in shape to compete with the number of kids that are coming in. Chris was in town recently, and on this day he had an injured shoulder, but still demonstrated the demands of his workout. 
He's not your average college student. He doesn't eat junk food and commits himself to a study schedule rather than a party schedule. I don't have a TV in my room because uh, most, most people do, and most people find it a little bit weird because as a college student, you know, a lot of people think you should relax, you know, hang out a little bit, watch TV, movies, whatever. Uh, it's really hard for me to do that because I've got the courses I have to take if I hope to get into the med school are pretty tough. So I made sure we didn't have a TV in our room so I wouldn't be tempted. Right now, I think I've got about, about 600 pounds on there right now. At Michigan, Chris learned how to put a pencil at the base of this machine so that he doesn't bounce the weight, reducing the odds of injury and maxing out his workout. Pencil. Michigan coaches and trainers agree that Chris should have his own leg press machine because the players don't want to lift the same amount he does. Not all of his workouts are this easy. Chris recalls the first one he had with the team. It was really something else because they had everything set up for us and uh, the workout was a lot tougher than what I was accustomed to. I, I, I thought I worked out hard while I was here and I, I did. But compared to what they put, they put us through the first day there, it was basically to weed out the guys who they didn't think could handle it. And um, I remember I got sick at the end of that practice, at the end, at the, at the end of that workout. But, um, you know, it basically, because I did that, it basically told me that, yeah, I'm ready for this. So where does he get the work ethic work from you or from mom? Well, that's a difficult question to answer because, okay, we'll say from neither. <laughs> we'll let him answer that question. <laughs> I'm very, very lucky to have my parents I have. Um, unfortunately, I don't tell them that enough, um, me being still a little bit macho and that kind of stuff you know, have to be a man but uh, you know I love them to death and uh, for them to be to have done everything that they've done for me to support me in all this uh, keeping my head on straight you know is uh, they've they've been saints mm -hmm. to me and they've they've played as big a part uh, in me being here as anybody else He's getting some minutes at Michigan, but certainly not close to what he would get at a Canadian school. But the trade-off to Chris is well worth it. It's not for everyone, but it was for Chris Roth, and I can't fault his decision whatsoever. He may only be getting a small amount of playing time, but Coach Jackson sees good things ahead for Chris. He's going to be just a tough Michigan-type fullback. I'm, a, I'm a looking forward, really, I'm really looking forward to coaching because he's what it's all about. And I think he's going to be a uh, tremendous asset to our program. You can do anything you want to do, and I'm, I'm proof of that. Nobody thought I could do it. A lot of people thought I would end up as very, very little, a spot on the road maybe. But the, the truth of the matter is, if you want anything as, as bad as you possibly can, you can achieve it. I just have to wait my turn and just see everybody else ahead of me and wait theirs.